in the face. Why are you so sad? I just threw your toy right in the pool. You can go get it. Go on, go get your toy. I, I, why do I have to convince you? You bring it to me, I throw it. You go get it, that's the deal. And so you just, why are you staring? Because he wants me to get in the pool with him. That's not happening right now. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, so what are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, kind of a different video for a Wednesday. Probably didn't even need to point that out. It'll be more than obvious. Usually, you know, Wednesday videos short and I just do a planter or talk about a specific plant, cares, guides, and I don't know, a craft, something along those lines. But there's still so much to do out here. I thought we'd just do a little vlog. Last week's vlog ran kind of long, an hour and 10 minutes. That's not happening with this one. Want to keep it relatively short because I have a lot to do this week. So time is of the essence. But what I would like to get done are just the little things that I didn't have time to finish off in last week's vlog. Mostly just some repots. There are a few plants out here that need some TLC. I've been moving things out from the garage, <laughs> from the grow space. So remember, these have all been inside under grow lights since October. I have a moose of Florida here. It needs a repot. Look at that. It's still in a one gallon container. That definitely needs to be bumped up into something much larger. And then there are a few other plants that I guess we, we talk about them now. We may as well. This is a vlog. Let's walk around and talk about the plants. I have some casual planters going to toss together over here, try and get some color and some fillers inside of these deck planters. That's what these big blue planters are called that are up here on the wall. I have a couple of yuccas that have needed to be repotted for like the last two years. Want to get around to doing that. And then what else? I think the moose and no-no. Yeah, moose and no-no right here. This could also use a new container. Maybe the blizzard alocasia. The other reason I wanted to do this video like this is because usually every year I document, that was a lot of hand, I'm so sorry. I document the process of bringing the plants outside, like make it a thing, it's a big exciting day. But I'm doing it in stages this year, so you're not really gonna be able to see everything come out all at once. And then have a review of how the plants did. So this way, you get to repot some things, see how some of the plants did during the winter. You can see I've got things scattered all over the place out here, like this coconut palm that was just riddled with spider mites this winter. A bit more tucked away in the shade because it's, it's not looking that great. Inside in the growth space, it was crisp and green. Looked beautiful. And then I brought it outside into the natural sunlight and I was able to see how bad the damage actually was. And I was spraying with neem every two weeks. I think I've gotten everything off of here. There's still a lot of the dust, but I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen anything moving around. I've gone with the magnifying glass to double check. I just, I want to keep it further away from the, I guess it doesn't matter. I was going to say I want to keep it further away from the other plants. But as long as it's out here in the backyard with them, if there's spider mites on there, they will likely spread. But it's, you know, this makes me feel better knowing that it's not right next to everything else. That was just a green Malayan, the red spicata. It did great. Lost a few fronds, but also put out a couple. Has a new one getting ready to open up. That's the, there's the nut. The coconut's part of the fun with those, right? Being able to see those. This should color up as it starts to get more light out here. You can go have a look at a few of the other plants before we start mixing up some soil and getting things potted up. I have a curcuma over here that is it's getting way too much sun. I need to move that. The Thai, it looks great. Pretty much always does. You know, these things are troopers. Monstera deliciosa. It's tricky to kill these unless you just overwater them or I, I think that's about it. <laughs> Overwatering them. They can be grown in low light. You can put them in high light. It really just depends on your climate for a lot of the care, but it seems happy. Look at this leaf that it's just opening up. Isn't that beautiful? This particular tie has never been one that's shown off much color variegation wise. I've talked about that a lot. It's a very, very old one from before they were really tissue culturing these things. And as it's maturing, many, many, many years into its maturity, the variegation on this is really starting to become more impressive. This leaf right here, it put out maybe a month ago month and a half ago and this one right here just started opening up and it's just, it's got so much white in there those big patchy chunks i'm not used to seeing that on the ties you know it's called a tie constellation because of that speckly effect it's kind of fun that it's starting to put out these bigger chunkier variegated leaves it did that on this one don't remember when that opened up then then right whenever that was that's when that opened up i think that this one right here 
was the first one that started to give me some splotches of bigger variegation. You can see it was just down there in the bottom. And then every leaf that's put out since then has had a little bit more. So that was the next one. And then, you know, this one and the one that I just showed y'all. Pretty exciting watching the new leaves pop open, especially when they're starting to do a lot more of their variegation. As far as the houseplants I've moved outside, I have a little Ripsalis down here, Snow Queen Pothos. Everything's just hanging out in the shade. They have to adjust to the light. That's an Alocasia Okinawa Silver that is underplanted, which I say very loosely, with some Roeos. I say loosely because I never actually potted them in here. I just set them down and they've rooted in. And it looks like they're actually doing pretty well in there. The mother and daughter Croton, I almost lost this one. It just randomly threw a huge fit right after I moved it inside last winter. I think it, it, just, it was too much of a change, the dry heat or something. I didn't have the humidifiers up and going for a few weeks when I moved them in. And I cut this way back. This was probably, I'd say, a good three feet tall. I cut it in half, and I thought it was dead. I went ahead and I set it on the floor of the grow space where it would have a lot of water <laughs> moving underneath it. And eventually, it flushed back out, not until like a month ago. So this laid in the grow space, sat, I should say, in the grow space just looking dead for basically the entire winter. I'm so happy to see it flush back out and start to do something. That's probably another point I should add to my repot list. I think that it would probably appreciate that. And then the elbow, which needs a trellis. I need to get this thing staked up onto something at this point. It's done a good amount of growing. Remember when I got this thing, it was just a few leaves and now it's swirling and dipping and diving all over the place. It's time to get that up onto a support other than just a single stick. It needs something that it can move around on something with more structure to it. Oh, and Oncidium right here. Picked this up last fall. Don't know what kind it is. Wasn't labeled. It was pretty sturdy Oncidium. I haven't had any issues with it. It just sat on a shelf in the growth space, got splashed with water occasionally, and it did great. Oh, and the Areca. Is this an Areca Tiandra, or is this one of those Stichospermas? I can't remember. They have been, I have two of these. There's still one in the growth space. I don't want to say fussy. That's not really the way to describe it. Just not uh, uh, aggressive. <laughs> finicky. Their foliage is very finicky. I feel like there's always spots of some kind or yellowing of some kind. Hopefully they'll appreciate being outdoors. I've never had them outdoors. I've only ever had them inside. So I'm hopeful that some heat and some humidity rolling in will really <laughs> do this plant well. I've just hit it with some fertilizer, some palm fertilizer, and you can give that a few weeks and see if that makes a difference and helps things out. Okay, that is an update on the plants that I have moved out so far. Now, let's go ahead and do some repots. Okay, all set up over here for the most part. I think, did I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Over here in the Gorilla Cart have standard all-purpose potting mix. By that I mean, you just miracle grow deep stuff and to make it better I'm gonna cut it with some ocean forest. You might be wondering why not just repot everything with the good potting soil. Well that's do you know how much this stuff is very expensive and microbes multiply and move around so I don't it should whatever's good in there should spread. It's not gonna spread a lot but enough. All right, so there's a bag of ocean forest and I also have cotton burr compost. This is the buckets from the palm fertilizer. I just took a scoop out of the bag. I'm not going to put very much of this in here at all because I have learned with the cotton burr compost, if you use too much, your plants will die. Yeah, a little bit goes along with that stuff. And I also have, it's just, it's gravel and sand that came out of a fish tank that is no longer around. I'm going to put some of that in there just to add some better drainage. I don't want to go too heavy on it because I have a tendency to make my soils drain too well. And then the amount of water that I end up having to give the plants is just ridiculous. That is another reason I want to get the Ocean Forest blend into this mix and some compost. Because I wanted some actual organics in there, right? Peat is organic, but it's also inorganic in the sense that it's not going to break down much, if at all. At least not in our lifetime. You know, it's not going to provide nutrient to the plants from it breaking down. You know what? I have another half bag sitting around, so may as well add that in there. I have a feeling I'm going to need every bit of this, so might as well. Oh, there's an entire pot in there. Well, that's nifty. I was looking for something I could use to scoop up soil with. Y'all know I'm going to need every single bit of this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get this blended up with the auger. Actually, I should probably just 
go in here by hand. That would be quicker. The blend in the bottom is kind of moist, so I don't see this just blending together really easily. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, get this blended up, and then we can start moving some things into some containers. Also, I don't normally wear gloves. I have no issue with my hands touching the soil, but I'm going to be touching the camera a lot, and it's just easier to not end up with compost and junk stuck under your nails. Wait, my fingers also won't be dyed for the rest of the day from the compost. It takes a lot to get compost stains off the hands. So it's just easier to use the gloves. Everything's all blended up. I'm starting from least drainage to most drainage. Does that make any sense? The reasoning for that is that, well, it's easy to add things to the mix so that it will drain better, but taking things away, that's a whole different story. So for the base mix, go with the bananas. I also, this has been a mind but like my brain is fried. I was gonna say mind boggling, that's not really the case. I went around, looked for pots, tried to find things that were, you know, relatively good enough for the plants that I'm potting up. And as I was doing that, it was just nonstop seeing things. I was like, oh, that needs to be repotted, that needs to be repotted. I don't think I have a potting mix to repot all of those things, but it's good to have the reminder. So I'm going from just repotting a few things today in this video to probably repotting a lot of things. This might seem like a dramatic step up pot size wise to go from a one gallon to a three gallon or really like 2.67, whatever the size of these things are. It's a 10 inch pot, but these are bananas. And they're going to root out into these containers very, very quickly. So I think that going bigger is better, especially since it's early, right? Summer hasn't even started yet. So these have all season to get rooted out into these containers before they go inside for the winter time. Also, when I'm bulk repotting things like this, I tend to, well, want, you really shouldn't pat the soil down period on these things, not hard anyways, just give them a shake, make sure the soil falls into place. You don't really need to go in and press down, at least not very hard because that can compact things and restrict the roots from growing out into it. Just slows things down some. But I also, you may have noticed, put a hefty amount of extra soil in here. It's because when I water this in, I anticipate lots of bubbles and the soil working its way down. Just speeds things up that way. I think that these bananas are gonna be so happy to be in larger containers, especially this no-no. It's been this, well, it's not even a one gallon. It's close to a one gallon, but it is just not loving life in that pot that I have it in right now. Actually, I brought this out about four days ago and it was kind of loose, which was surprising. But the, okay, this is good. The roots look okay on here. Can we see the, you see, not that way, this way, there you go. Active growth on the roots, not root bound, not seeing any swirling at the bottom, not extreme swirling anyways, down at the bottom. So that's good. I was wondering if maybe I had waited too long to get this potted up, but I think that this is probably just the right timing. Okay, next I have this windmill palm here. I think that would be probably the one to go with next, or maybe a, I have a ginger too. Now, I'll handle the windmill palm first. This is a, uh, wait, who are you? I don't, wait, I can't remember its name. It just popped right out of my, my little wags. That's little wags. Trachycarpus, fortunii, little wags. Actually, I don't know if it is a fortunii because of the little wet, might be a vagnarius. It doesn't matter. It's a super dwarf windmill palm. I got this from Plant Delights last year. And it is, you can see down here, see what's going on with those roots. Look at them. It's ready to bust out. It's becoming difficult to keep hydrated, which means it's time to get into a larger container. I didn't, oh, I didn't pick out a pot for this one. I thought I was all prepared. I thought I was doing such a good job and I didn't even grab a pot for it. Oh, I found, you can't see, you don't know what's going on. I'm behind the camera. Perfect pot. Love this container. Don't remember what it's called, but it's made by Camp. Campania? Campania? It's proven itself to be a very sturdy palm tree, so I don't think that it's going to be a risky or dangerous thing to do to go ahead and move this one up into a pot that's pretty large for it. Only downside to this is that the top is smaller than the middle, which could be a problem. Be a problem down the road is what I was going to say had I finished that sentence before moving on to grabbing more soil. It becomes time to pull the plant out when it needs a larger pot then you don't, you got all this down here, but you got the, oh, you get it, it doesn't work. But I love this pot and I love this palm tree and I would like for them to go together. Wow, this is really in there. Try my best 
go ahead and get this out without tearing up the roots. I can tell there must be one pretty big root on the other side. Something's got this lodge in there. Wow, okay, look at that. Don't even have a lot of room to work with here to even see if that's the right size pot. I'm gonna knock out some of it. You can't see what's happening. Not a dramatic swirl at the bottom. So I'd say that this is a repot that was just on time. Should I go deeper than that? I don't think I should because you want the soil to be right around here at the base. Yes, it has these weird roots going on up here because it's almost like the plant decided it wanted to branch out. Not branch out, but split up and make more. See what I'm talking about? But then it stopped. So I assume that that's what those roots are for. I don't think that these are even alive. I'm going to say just keeping it centered is probably the best move just to be safe because if I tilt it in order to get those roots down they're just going to end up rotting off. Should have enough of a whip here on this that I can give this drink. Something I touch on whenever I repot is to never plant things too high, right? So you plant them too high then when you water them it's just you got to give them a little drink and then a little drink and a little drink to prevent the soil from running off the top. That gets annoying. That'll give my plants a decent sized drink. I'm going to throw some more in here just for good luck. Like with everything else, I assume that that's going to burp down when I watered and that should make this palm tree so much happier. I was starting to throw a dead spear in here. You see that? Got some brownage going on in there. Doesn't really want to focus, but you get it. I think you know what I'm talking about. And that is because it was really hard to keep this thing watered. Because one, like I was just talking about, I was having to do that little drink, little drink, little drink thing because everything was coming out the sides, it itself up. So it was higher in the container than what was intended when I planted it up. This would be much better. This should be good in this pot for, I'd say, a year, something like that. As long as I don't wait too long to repot it, then the shape shouldn't be an issue. If I wait too long, which I would say would be like two years, within a year those roots should still be plenty flexible to lift that back out and bump it up into something larger. Uh, ginger? Maybe I think it's ginger time. This is a Hedicium flaming, nope, not flaming torch, Tahitian flame. Mix them up all the time. It's a beautiful variegated butterfly ginger, fairly vigorous grower for a variegated ginger. I'd say for a variegated Hedicium that is. This has probably been the most vigorous of any of the variegated Hedichiums I've grown. I didn't plan out a pot for this. I need to go find a pot. Okay, I actually ended up taking that entire container over to the yard and banging the old soil out of it because with the Hedicium, I'm just trying to replant this rhizome. It hasn't been growing much the last couple of years, which is odd. This has always been a really prolific ginger, which is something I had started to talk about and then abandoned that conversation entirely for who knows what reason. Well, I know ADD, that's the reason. I know exactly what happened there. The potty mix that it was in it had turned to mud. That happens every few years when you have organic matter in your containers and a whole bunch of ants came out of that too. So I got as much of that soil off the rhizome as I could. It was a little piece of mushed up rhizome in here and I went ahead and I cut that out. You should probably cut deeper but I didn't. This isn't really getting a big upgrade to its container but it's getting fresh soil and some fresh life. I don't want to move it up into anything too large right away. Uh, and I just now decided to divide this piece of rhizome off of there because I need to get these settled to the edge of the pot so they can grow out this way. And that was, it was in the way. That's pretty good. I think that this is going to be very happy with a fresh mix. That's not all gunky. It had basically separated itself out in the container. So the top, I'd say 25% of the pot had roots in it and the rest of it was just mud from down below and it had also lifted itself up. Every few years they work their way to the top of the soil and sometimes need to be pulled up and moved back down. I think that it's going to like that potting mix a lot. It's very rich. It's going to break down just like the other ones do. I actually, this particular ginger, the Tahitian flame, that's what the variegation looks like on there. Various greens, mostly just white stripage and there it has an orange inflorescence on it. I have one of these I put in the ground a couple of years ago and it looks like it's just now starting to come up. So it's been hardy here, which is great. I might go ahead and maybe pull that chunk of rhizome out of this one that, you know, I split the rhizome and then put that in the ground because I would like to have more of these around. This is probably my favorite of the Hedicheums. I just don't have the easiest time finding them. They're not that easy to come by, so I like to keep one out of the ground just as a security plant in case the ones that are in the ground don't make it. But since I have an extra rhizome in there, once that sprouts, maybe I'll pull it out. Pull it out and put it in the ground. That's what I was saying. I need to move this off the table. It's in my way. 
I was about ready to move on to the yuccas and the alocasia and having agave down there and a mungave down there needs to be repotted. And those are all plants where it means it's time to go ahead and add more stuff to the point. The tripod's not working. Come on, tripod. Those are things where I need to add more to this mix so it will drain better. But I'm wondering if maybe I should repot Mr. Freckles. I just realized y'all may not even know what I'm talking about. Mr. Freckles, the Freckles Croton. He had a rough winter. My heater malfunctioned and ran and ran and ran and it got to like 102 in the garage. And it's all turned off. Everything's safe now. But uh, it Freckles completely defoliated when that happened and has sprung back fairly well. But you can see how this Croton is leaning way out of the container. It just doesn't look right. And I have a larger, more sturdy pot back here, right? You see that right there? And I have this nice, rich blend here that I think it would really enjoy. It would probably enjoy some more drainage. That's basically what I was getting as this would be an in-between plant where I need to add a little bit more stuff to this mix so it will drain better, but not quite as much as what I would need to do for the yuccas. I think I should just go ahead and do it. The plant would probably be much better. I'm starting to see some roots come out the bottom of the pot. That's a good indicator. And the pot's cracked. It's I'm going to take it out to the yard, beat the old soil out of it, and come back. So, what I will do here is add the rest of my gravel to this mix. Actually, I'm going to keep that in there. That way I only have to blend the stuff that's over here. Get that sprinkled around, some gravel and some sand, so it's not a ton of stuff for extra drainage, but it's just a little bit better than what it was before. And then I'm going to say maybe a handful, maybe two handfuls of this orchid blend aeroid mix chunky perlite and coconut chips that'll help aid in aeration and drainage i'm gonna get that blended up and we can move forward okay that's done got some soil on the bottom by the way i didn't mention this but it should go without saying anytime you're watching one of my videos there's always drainage in the containers if ever for some reason there isn't i will point that out since this has a lean going on to it i'm gonna go ahead and just straighten the whole thing out. That's going to make it look pretty weird for a few weeks. But that will be well worth it in the long run to have it straighten itself back out. And also have to make sure that it's someplace with full sun so that it will stop stretching out. And really, I should probably even consider pruning this entire thing back. But I don't want to do that right now. I don't like chopping on my freckles. Gentle shake. Make sure that i got this positioned right since it's at an angle. Since it's nice and warm out. It's not terribly humid yet. It will be probably in a week or two. I'm not all that worried about the bases of these trunks being covered, but I think that most of that will settle when I water this in. And if I need to scoop some out, can I just scoop some out? Oh, that is so good. Freckles needed. This is really deserved it. This has been a great plant. I've only ever had the one issue with it, and it was that it overheated and I almost killed it. That wasn't the plant's fault. So you can tell it has that lean to it up top. That's because the entire plant was at an angle. It's all fairly flexible, newer growth that's doing that. I'm pretty confident that that should straighten itself out without me needing to do much of anything to it, but I'll pay attention, keep an eye on it. Like I said, I could go through and give this like a 50% cutback, but I just really don't want to. Freckles is a really great croton that should flush back out and look amazing in probably like three weeks to a month. For a croton, it's a very vigorous plant. Okay, I think the alocasia, that's probably the one to do next because the soil blend is about what I'd want for the alocasia. We're in between croton and yucca <laughs> drainage right now. And uh, I don't I was thinking, should I just bump this up to a 10 inch container? It's summer and this is supposed to be a pretty vigorous alocasia. It's warm out so I'm not worried about it rotting out if there's too much soil around the root ball. I, I think I should just go for it and put it into a larger container. Oh no, this was on the whole time I was going. Battery killer, but okay. Yeah, so normally you wouldn't bump something up quite this much, but the alocasia, everything with it should be about the same as everything I was saying with the bananas. They're vigorous, it's early in the season, so it has all summer. It's not even summer yet. It's only May 19th today. It has a long time to go ahead and fill out this pot and then be ready and roaring to go for winter time. Is this gonna be right for that? I think it would be fine for summertime, but in the winter, when this is inside, I think that would rot and die. So may as well go ahead and get some more stuff blended in here and get it closer to being yucca drainage. More gravel. I have tons and tons of this 
aquarium gravel. And it's a gravel that is, oh, oh, I forgot that I had the biomedia in there too. And that gravel is for planted aquariums, so it has some nutrient in it. Not a ton, but some. So I'm in here blending it up. I'm already getting my fingers dirty. You notice that I abandoned the gloves. This soil was just getting down on the inside, so it's defeating the purpose of it. I like the way that's looking. So it still has some moisture retention, but it should be nice and airy. It should have been nice and airy this whole time for everything else. But you know what I mean? The plants I'm moving into these pots are ones that will rot. The yucca, the alocasia, that soil can't compact on them at all. It needs to have opportunity for airflow. I could add some more in there. And yes, all of the plants need airflow. All these plants need a nice oxygen rich environment for their roots. I just mean some of the ones that I'm planting are more prone to rot out over time if the soil compacts than some of the others are. Let it shake, let it settle down. And also this is, I, do I need to say this? Not at all how I would repot an alocasia that were being kept in the house as a house plant. That's a very different game, right? You're dealing with lower temperatures, so less active growth, and the plant being much more susceptible to rotting out. Outside for several months, I'm not worried about that. And then by the time fall rolls around, there should be a nice sturdy plant with a lot of roots in this container, potentially more roots than the soil. That's, you know, I don't want to have to repot it in the wintertime, but if I have to, I will. The growth space is pretty warm. It should be fine. They're just yuccas, right? Yuccas like a good amount of drainage. And yes, I am pronouncing it right. Yucca is a different plant. It's spelled different. It looks different. Don't come for me. Since these stay outside during the winter, it is extra important that the soil drains well. You want to make sure it does retain moisture because they will be prone to drying out at the same time. But also don't want it to become waterlogged and just clog up constantly and then freeze too much and then the plants rot out. There we go. I like that. This is looking good. I mean, look at these things. These are so overdue for a repot. I feel like I've been saying for Gosh, maybe three years <laughs> this has been on my list. But they're yuccas, so they're so sturdy. It's so easy to go, oh, I'll get to that one later. They're so sturdy and forgiving. It's kind of like a ponytail palm. You can go years without repotting them because you just know it's going to be okay and other plants end up taking priority. I think I might need to you know, cut the container off of this thing. Yeah, no surprise there. These have been in these pots for a long time. I use my snips to make a cut up top. I they don't go very far, so I'm going to need to come in here with a box cutter and trace that down the side. And that should, yeah, there we go, that'll pop out now. I bet these roots are going to look pretty crazy. Well, okay, maybe not. Because this blend, that soil mix is so old, I am also going to take it up to the landscape and try and knock some of it out of there, and then, I'll, you know, she'll move on. I'll repot it. Getting these plus the croton repotted all at the same time, I'm so happy about this. It's always so nice to be able to say you got something done, had on your list to get done for a long time. But okay, that's good. Long overdue. Those are 15 gallon containers. A nice big bump up from the seven gallon pots they were in before. Now, since I have this pot free, I think that this would be a good pot to put this Medio Picta. It's a Yucca Aloifolia picked up from Plant Delights. It's in a Plant Delights haul a few weeks ago. Uh, several videos prior to this one. It is technically hardy here, but I don't know. LA folias, they can be hit or miss with our winter, so I would prefer to grow it out for a couple of years, get the center of it to be a nice thick plant before exposing it to our winters, where sometimes it gets very, very cold. I think that this is just the right pot for it. Just like I had the little wags in here, because that was a very special plant to me, and I wanted to grow it up and get it nice and big. Same thing with this yucca. All right, and there it is. All done. I love it. It looks so good in that pot. Very nice in this container. And this is another reason that I like to use this particular pot for plants like this is because it's one of my nicer bonsai pots. And I always remember to move it in during the winter time. So no matter what I put in here, it's not going to end up being left outside to die. Should I forget if there's a frantic cold blast that comes out of nowhere? It'd have to be a crazy cold blast to kill a yucca, though. Yeah, okay, that was good. I'm going to get everything off of the table and get things watered. Give everybody a nice drink. Set them someplace where they will get bright morning sun and then filtered light throughout the rest of the day, whether it's a full sun plant or not. I'm going to give them some time to adjust to their new environment. And uh, it's also stupid light outside because of the cicadas. Don't know how it's coming across on the microphone, but it is obnoxious. 
can always tell. It's moving on to around 1 o'clock in the afternoon when they get really loud. Around 3 or 4 yesterday at least. I had to go inside because it was kind of hurting my ears. It was like a shrill. These periodical cicadas, they're more shrill. Or maybe they're just more of them. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Thanks for hanging out. It was fun getting some things repotted. Got to get everybody caught up on what's outside. Really big repots for me. Just ones that, I, like I said, had needed to be done for a long time. That ginger freckles and then those yuccas. All really good things to have done. I'll get around to these later. I don't have time right now. It's too loud. Not gonna be able to hear anything I'm saying. And it's start, I'm just, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I wonder what's inside. Comment down below, say hi. What's going on in your gardens? You having a fun time with your plants? Great time for repots. This is the time. Your house plants and tropicals. It's so much easier to get it done this time of year before the summer heat rolls in, like right before that heat gets there. They have at least four to six months to really get that heat that's outside and the natural sunlight and <laughs> root themselves out. I just noticed the wind blew the beach ball out of the pool. I don't mind it. That looks kind of good there. Oh, I should probably actually put that back in. That thing's big enough to get smashed a plant if it rolls around too far. It, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.